So what's better, digital or tactile? Currently, I do most of my drawings on an iPad. Think you know my answer? Keep watching to find out. Hey, I'm Jeff Katerba. I'm an author, speaker, and creativity coach. And on this channel, we talk about the creative process and overcoming obstacles so you can follow your dreams. If you find this video helpful, be sure to give it a like. And for more content on creativity, be sure to subscribe. What's better for creatives, digital or tactile? It's a question I'm asked a lot and it's something I often hear debated. Maybe you've always done things the tactile way with pencils and pens and brushes and now the idea of drawing on glass? No, it doesn't seem pure. Or maybe you're the opposite, all screens all the time. Or maybe you're feeling a bit stuck and you wanna do a refresh on what's in your creative toolbox. From the very beginning, creatives have used their hands to make stuff. Think cave paintings. Until the advent of computer technology, creatives got messy, spattering paint, ruining clothes, staining fingers. Think of all the great works of art, all the architecture, all the sculpture, all the music that was created with hands. And on the other hand, making things digitally offers creatives an unlimited palette. The possibilities are endless. We can now do things that we could only dream about before. It's incredible. Not only that, working digitally can speed up the process. The sky is the limit. Until a few years ago, I drew the traditional way. Pencil, pen, paper, brush, use watercolor, <laughs> used all sorts of traditional methods, and I would stain my clothes, and I would stain my fingers. There were ink blots everywhere on my shoes, my pants. I'd go home at the end of the day, and I would feel so good about it. It was like, oh, look, I did this thing. It was all tactile. It was all hand on paper, and I loved it. I loved the whole process. Of it. But at the start of the pandemic, I was still working at a newspaper, and I was avoiding being around other people. But all of my gear was at the newspaper, so I couldn't work remotely. That's when my son Josh reminded me that I had an iPad sitting around collecting dust. I'd had it for three or four years. I'd maybe tried it once and I didn't like it. But he said, Dad, maybe now is the time to try it again. So I took it out. I had to find the charger and charge it up and dusted it off. And uh, I tried it and I still didn't like it. And I tried it again and I still kind of didn't like it, but I could see that there was some potential there. That's what another cartoonist friend of mine, Steve Sachs said, hey Jeff, you just have to start. You just have to dive in. So I set a deadline to just start. I didn't know what I was doing, but I dove in. And yes, there was a bit of a learning curve, but I thought, oh, this is amazing. I'm able to draw remotely from home. I don't have to go in. I don't, I don't have to be around other people. And it can do some pretty cool stuff. And I kept with it and I stayed with it. And I actually fell in love with it. Not only for the convenience, because now I can draw anywhere. I can travel with my iPad. I can draw on a train. I can draw in other cities. And now I can draw remotely wherever I am in the world. And it's amazing. Not to mention, the kinds of things I can do on the iPad are things that I could only dream about when I was drawing with a pen and pencil. Especially when you're on deadline, you don't have a lot of time to work. You have to work quickly. The iPad has opened up so many new worlds for me. On the other hand, I was desperately craving that tactile sensation. So I did something I hadn't done in a really long time. I went back to oil painting. I hadn't oil painted since college. So I immersed myself in the process, you know, squeezing paint tubes, for example. Just the feel, the tactile feel of a paint tube is marvelous. And I would get into the zone of these paintings, listening to classical music, painting, and one day I realized that I reached over with my index finger and thumb and I touched the oil painting and I was attempting to pinch and squeeze the image to move it around. So there's some funny crossover in my brain from iPad to oil painting and back again. It's kind of funny how the brain works, but it was kind of a funny moment and I had, well, oil paint on my fingers. So if you're a tactile person, try using a digital tool. You're already using technology. Give it a shot just even as an experiment. It might be interesting to see how it impacts your tactile work. Even Leonardo da Vinci used technology. He used something called Camera Obscura, a device that projects the image of a person or a thing onto the canvas and the artist can trace over it. When you mix it up and experiment, that's good for the brain. Even if you don't stick with it, it's good to try out new things. So if you draw and even if you don't, Try making art digitally. I use Procreate on iPad, but there are all sorts of free apps out there for drawing. There's even a wonderful 3D sculpting app you can try. It's something you can make a sculpture with on your iPad and then print it out using a 3D printer. So it's kind of a mashup of both. Okay, so now let's say you only do digital work. Maybe you write on the laptop or you draw on an iPad. First and foremost, get a notebook. Even if you write down notes on your phone, absolutely get a notebook. The brain just processes information differently when you physically write it down. It helps you remember things better. It helps the creative process and it helps you brainstorm. I made an entire video on why you should always carry a notebook. I'll leave that link below. There's a tendency when working digitally 
to strive for perfection and perfection and symmetry has its place. But in this age of AI, we also want a sense of human touch and authenticity. Ironically, when drawing on the iPad, I've had to learn how to become more loose and more human and to allow for accidents to happen and to allow those things to be, and to be okay with them. Paint, paint with actual paint. Even if you don't do any kind of digital art, paint, get messy, get some actual paint, get some watercolors, get some finger paints, put your hands in it, get messy, make a mess, spatter some paint. Be like Jackson Pollock, famous artist that spattered paint, dripped paint, be like Jackson Pollock, make a mess. So which is best? Ultimately, it's about expanding your horizons. It's what's good for your brain and your creative process. I believe it's good to have as many tools in your creative toolbox as you possibly can. For some projects, digital does work better. For others, it's better to do something tactile, or maybe it's a mashup of both. If you're a digital person and that's what works for you, awesome. Same if you're a tactile person, great. Keep going. The best tool is the one that helps you be most creative. For some, this might be trying new things and experimenting. For others, it might be sticking with what's reliable or some combination of both. Use the tool or tools that works best for you in your projects. It's about what is gonna help you reach your goals and your dreams and fulfill those passions inside of you. When you branch out and try new things, you'll now have more tools in your creative toolbox. You've now gotten in touch with your deeper creative self. You've tried new things, you've branched out, and now you know yourself as a creative even more deeply. You've mixed it up, you've done a refresh, and now you see the world and yourself in a deeper and new way, which can only make for a better result for your creative project. In the end, it's all about your dreams and passions and how you can best share those with the world. So if you're a tactile person and you like getting your hands dirty, try a digital approach. And likewise, if you only do things digitally, take a break from the screen, grab a notebook, and see how it feels to write something down. Ultimately, it's about what works best for you. In the comments below, let me know if you prefer tactile or digital or some combination of the two. If you found this video helpful, be sure to give it a like, and for more content on creativity, be sure to subscribe. Hey, thanks a lot for watching. Remember, we're all creative, you're creative, keep on creating.